Welcome to the second edition of the CSA Career Pathways in Cricket webinar series. Today we have episode two, where we're going to be focusing on the off-field career opportunities and also the pathway to success. My name is Lita Kahana. I will be your host this evening. Uh, I'll be also joined by various esteemed um, panelists and guests of this evening just to talk us through really the, the career opportunities that exist, their careers as well specifically, and just some guidance and, and, and um, assistance to, to help youngsters out there and individuals who are looking to, to enter this uh, cricketing world and just help them with a pathway to success. Moving on, um, we just want to just want to to illustrate the key importance of um, why we do what we do, um, which is um, being uh, professionals within the cricketing fraternity. Um, it's all about passion, and uh, wherever wherever you speak to around the world, um, in South Africa, wherever you you come across that works at CSA, um, they'll tell you, or in sports in general, actually, they'll tell you it's all about passion. If you don't have the passion, um, it'll be tough to work the long hours that one is required to work, and it'll be tough to really um, in, enjoy what you're doing and 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 be able to wake up every morning with a smile on your face. And I just added here some quotes that just speak about the importance of passion and love what you do and how that will you know help foster um, that character and also help foster success in your career as well um, as you can see there there's a few um, from Oprah Winfrey you've got Albert Schweitzer also Steve Jobs um, Frida Kahlo um, obviously the legendary Pele and also we've got a bit of an unknown one there but I think it's still you know um, speaks to really um, the whole importance of passion and how that can really help you thrive within your career in cricket just moving on. Oh, sorry about that. I'd like to also introduce my colleague um, who also helped me on via the first episode as well. She'll be controlling the, the screen as well as um, helping with the chat box. Um, Alungile Nyakambi from Cricket South Africa. Thanks, Alungile. Um, just now moving on to the off-field career pathways that actually exist within cricket and Cricket South Africa. Um, as I said, we will be joined by esteemed guests that will talk to um, some of these some of these career pathways. We've got um, a chief executive, which I think speaks for itself, someone that really um, heads up the operational side of an, of, of an organization in cricket. And then you also have the communications department, which has various pathways within it, but it really stems down to, to handling the media and the PR um, operations of, of the organization and obviously the various teams that you're working with. And then you've got an event management who, as I said, um, I think speaks for itself, that handles all the ag activations and, and actual events that will be taking place within cricket. So from your... Um, you know, from actually hosting the the, the international match or, or domestic match to hosting any announcement events or any other PR related or marketing events that will be helping to promote a certain brand or um, a certain topic that will be promoted by Cricket South Africa. And then you've got your legal office, which handles all the um, legal matters within the organization and ensures that the, the organization also um, uh, are held within the the responsibilities and 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 the the the, the requirements that also are required from uh, an organisation such as Cricket South Africa, and also it will be the same case uh, amongst all our affiliates and all the other entities that exist within cricket. Finance, I think it speaks for itself. It's also there's various um, there's various roles within the finance department, from your head of finance to all the way to your to your secretary, and. Um, it's just really all stems from handling the money and ensuring that um, South Africa stays within the, the set budget and hopefully also um, can make more and more money as, as the, the, the year goes along. And then your HR, obviously, that handles your, your normal human related, uh, human resources related matters. And then I won't go through uh, all these, but um, I think really, really you, you, you'll get the, the, the gist of it. Um, there's administration, facilities manager, then there's a commercial, the senior cricket manager, then you're going to your marketing, your content creation, um, your, your stakeholder management, digital content, cricket operations, mass participation, hospitality, and also an exciting one um, that, you know, Cricket South Africa is really, um, um, really emphasizing recently, which is the safeguarding, uh, safeguarding program. Obviously, within an organization that deals a lot with young individuals and, 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 and young individuals dealing with, with, with adults also within the, the, the business 
it's very important to ensure that the safeguarding measures are in place. And that's something that we're going to talk to um, an individual as well about that um, and just touch into that as well. And then obviously, last but not least, you've got your cricket services. It's quite general, but it really entails just the cricket operations side of the game, you know, handling from fixtures, organizing tournaments, um, handling the programs that exist as well within um, Cricket South Africa, as I said, and all the other affiliates. And then just going to the next slide. Thanks, Alu. Um, um, as I said, we've got a few guests that will be talking to each part of these. Um, so some of these career pathways. Um, we'll be having Lucy Davy from um, the communications department. She's actually the Proteus main media manager. And then um, from marketing, we've got Wanele Mgomezulu. And, um, and and from who is the CSA chief um, marketing officer. Then also from HR, we'll have Musa Gubevu. Um, and then safeguarding, as I said, Charles Klacha will be the, um, will be talking to us about his role as the national safeguarding officer. And then we've got um, senior cricket services manager at CSA, um, Johan Veyers, who will also be talking about his programs and, and his role at CSA. And then last but not least, we've got um, cricket operations um, manager Siv William Ngwana who also just to talk about um, his role and um, the really important role of arranging important things such as fixtures. And then later on, we'll have um, two guests as well who will be joining us. These individuals have quite unique stories. Um, pathways to their success. We've got Mr. Wesley Kulantinianos um, from Easton's. He's a former player and now turned CEO. And so we'll just really be chatting to him about his new role and, and, and just how he got to where he got to. And then also we have Ms. Anelisi Wemzimela, who is um, the Cricket Services Manager at Border Cricket. She'll just be talking us through her role and just the exciting journey that she took to where she is, not just exciting, but pioneering as well. And then last but not least, the second section will just be focusing really on the, the panel discussion, um, just trying to, 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 to gauge more information about the insights to, to training and development that these youngsters and people who are interested in, in, in careers in cricket that they can um, take on, identifying those opportunities and just the support systems that exist. And then also there's a list of questions um, that I just want you guys to take note of. And also, you know, you'll be able to ask later on as well. You can go to the next one. I know. As I said, these are just some of the more questions that we're gonna um, find out from our panelists about really how they can help, you know, the, the the community at large and just people who are interested in young individuals as well who are interested in a career in cricket. And then the last last section of today um, will be the Q and A part of it. I think um, asking questions is really important, as I uh, mentioned in the chat box as well. To please. Uh, don't be, don't hesitate to ask questions, ask as many questions as you, as you can. That's why we have this. It's an information centric platform. So we just want to really share as much information as possible. So if you have anything you want to find out or clarify, please do um, let us know. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to call up our first guest of the evening. Um, can I please call up Mr. Mr. Sivuile Mbengwana, the Cricket Operations Officer? Um, he is, as I said, he's got a very important job of handling fixtures. So, Brasivo, can I please ask you just to get your, my, your your screen on and as well as your mic on, please, and unmute yourself. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Lita. Can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Brasivo, um, just firstly, for those who don't know you, you've been in the game for a while. Um, you've met many people along the way. Can you just give us a bit of background about yourself and who you are and what you do at Quick South Africa? Thank you, Lita. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, the name is Sivuile Mkungwana. Um, originally from uh, the beautiful city of East London down at the border region. Uh, been involved in cricket for basically all my life, um, having uh, been a scorer, an umpire, um, and uh, been a development officer down at Guazulu Natal Cricket. So uh, been involved in cricket since the, the likes of, uh, I think, 1997, when I got involved uh, with, with scoring um, at border cricket. And then uh, also at the same time became uh, the, an executive member of the South African Cricket Scorer Association. Um, around about 2002, I made my way up uh, from East London to Johannesburg, where I was the um, operations uh, um, officer for the World Cup in 2003, 
Um, thereafter, I went down to, uh, to KwaZulu Natal to become the developmental officer down in KwaZulu Natal and made my way back to Johannesburg in 2006. I took up the role as a PA to the general manager of cricket affairs and been involved in the cricket operations space ever since then. Awesome, awesome stuff. And obviously now, in the, as you said, cricket operations space, um, heading up a very important arm of the business, which is obviously um, so handling all the cricket operations that are involved around, you know, international fixtures, the domestic season, etc. Can you just give us an insight into what responsibilities that you have as a cricket operations uh, manager at Cricket South Africa? Well, uh, Lita, funny enough, I've only been in the role for two months, um, having uh, taken over from uh, Mike Gadger, who's recently retired. So the, the cricket operation space is, is very much fast. It, it deals a lot of things uh, from on the field of play to even off the field of play. So the main uh, responsibilities that we put together in the operation space is a fixture. Um, as we all know that uh, the cricket very much revolves around uh, making sure that there's fixtures taking place, whether it's from an international perspective, uh, domestic, as well as uh, including um, national weeks that do take place around the country. So our role is to ensure that uh, guys, um, the guys and girls out they um, do play cricket um, and, and we, we, we try and make sure that everybody is, is, is actually quite uh, the, the scheduling uh, of, of these fixtures is, is fair to everybody um, uh, around the country. It's, it's a very vast uh, 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 responsibility. And um, as you said, very vast, and it's, it's even difficult to really pinpoint because you do so many things from you know, tournament director to, to arranging logistics and everything else. But now, how do you ensure a smooth execution, really, overall of cricket matches, tournaments and events um, that you work on as, as, as in the operations? Can you hear me? I'm losing you there, Lita. Oh, can you hear me now? I think let me let me rather join through my phone because it's it's I've got problems. All right, no, no worries. We'll we'll come back to you then. All good. Yeah, as I said, um, yeah, Brasivu really handles um, complex complex. Um, responsibilities within the cricket operation space. Um, he's an individual, as I said, goes from um, hosting uh, tournaments as a, as a tournament director to, 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 to really arranging fixtures. And it's not just fixtures, but liaising with international, um, international markets and also in, uh, relays, um, liaising with broadcasters as well. So it's really a vast, as he said, a very vast um, um, scope of work that he has. And I'm sure I just want to tap into a couple more questions before we lose him. Otherwise, if he doesn't come back, we'll just quickly move on. Um, up next, I'll just like to please um, ask Miss Lucy Davy to to prepare herself, and I'll move to her straight away. If we're not winning here with Sivu, all right, I think he's logged off. Lucy, we'll quickly come to you, and then we'll see if we have time to come back to Sivu. Miss Davy, welcome. Thank you very much, Lita, and good evening, everyone that's uh, dialed in uh, to this webinar series. Awesome stuff, Lucy. Um, you're a very close colleague of mine. I've worked with each other for many years across various roles, um, but a lot of people might not know you out there. So just please give us a bit about yourself and what you're currently doing at Cricket South Africa. Sure, no worries. Thank you, Lita. And then to your point, uh, we do go way back. Um, so, and it probably then starts off my journey in South African cricket, um, where I started, uh, well, you and I both started out as interns um, at uh, the Momentum Multiply Titans or there at Supersport Park. And I remember us like sharing one desk together in a like corner office um, as we're like starting our journey out in, in cricket. So essentially, yeah, just personally, I'm born and raised in a small farming town called Standerton in Pumalanga. And um, yeah, after, after university, um, I actually studied clothing retail management um, and then a year in journalism. And that kind of started the, um, 
the well the idea or interest in pursuing a career in 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 sport um as well and obviously was always particularly fond of cricket so um yeah then I took a gap year um went to live in Australia for a year and essentially um uh, why I'm mentioning that story is because the the money I made from you know working as like a waitress and in a in a um a factory as well, uh, like picking and packing products was the money I made from that. I then used that to, um, when I got back home, I was like, okay, well, now I've got to get serious about life. So what am I actually going to do? And I always remember that I had an interest in cricket. So I was, um, I then thought, okay, how can I make a you know career in it? Um, did a bit of research online and, and there were a couple of opportunities um, in the UK um, at counties there um, to do a couple of internships. So the money I saved up, um, I used that to then, then cover that. Um, I think I was interning um, for about, uh, I think between the stint I did in the UK and then coming back to Titans and interning there. I think I interned for nine months before landing a role. So um, why I'm mentioning that is because it does take some time. And I think we just got, you know, you've always got to exercise a bit of patience and I think you'll know from your story as well um, that uh, does it does take time um, and the things don't necessarily happen instantly. But I think if you obviously keep that belief and dedication in there, it will it will come to fruition um, in the end. So yeah, cut a long story short, was Brandon Combs officer at Titans. Um, am I allowed to say what the leading franchise in South Africa? I'm supposed to be neutral now, so let me <laughs> let me pull back on that. But um, yeah, so I did that for about two or three years, and then there was an opening at Cricket South Africa um, in the media and comms department. Um, and then I was fortunate to land that role there. And then essentially just been, I mean, done a bit of media management, then crossed over to digital content management um, with uh, Winelo, who you introduced at the start, working alongside his department of brand and marketing. Um, and essentially now back in uh, media um, and comms as media manager to, to the men's team. Probably yes. waffled on a bit there, but hopefully that sums it up in a no, nutshell. No, no, very important stuff there. Um, Luz, just for, for people who are not sure out there, can you just tell us how a role of a communications or media manager um, and how does that contribute to the success of, of, of a cricket team or, or an organization? Yeah, no, no, definitely. So I think essentially the role of the media manager is ultimately being that middle man between or middle woman um, or middle person uh, between um, the team um, as well as then the outside world and also with the corporate world. So they, you really are that middle person linking all of them. Um, I think when you talk about, um, you know, the almost I said the, the success in the role and actually what um, is the makeup of it or what essentially it is, it's essentially creating accessibility to 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 the team, to the management, uh, between the public and, and the team. And that's not necessarily media only. It's also the access that we're giving to fans and essentially how... Um, you, you do play a key role in the positioning of the team, um, you know, and just again, I just want to stress that the accessibility and the, you know, transparency and the openness of the team to, to, to the outside world in that sense. And then, of course, just managing, you know, the day to day um, media um, interactions and obligations. Obviously, media, it's a very strong um, relationship that you do need to hold. Um, and also, sometimes you might not think this, but also with your, your sponsors and partners, because, you know, your team have to, um, you know, obviously have commitments to to um, Cricket South Africa's corporate partners. So it's about ensuring those activations are, are met and rolled out um, and just, you know, community engagements and those sort of things. And then also the relationships you have with other cricket uh, boards and federations as well. And obviously the ICC um, when it comes to those global tournaments. So it really is um, a multifaceted um, role that really I think has grown in scope over the years. Um, the responsibilities definitely gotten bigger. So I think, you know, whether it's, you know, the players looking at you as to why it's some things are happening on the outside you've got to answer to that and then everyone from the outside is looking to you towards what's going on in the team so um yeah there is a lot to a lot to manage but um yeah it can obviously it can be good and fun at the same time but it does carry um, a lot of responsibility um, as well as you all know in your role as the um, women's media manager no 100 100 lucy and just to touch on, on on some of the things that you said um Obviously, it's as you said, it's 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 a it's you it's a multifaceted role. Um, you know, you have to deal with different stakeholders all the time. But now, working with the Proteus men, it's a high stake position. It's high pressure. You've got a lot of people coming from different sides. How do you go about dealing with you know some of the high pressure moments that you you get, and how would you would you really advise someone to go about particularly dealing with stress at work and just you know everyday stuff that you have to put up with in your role? 
So I think it's really about taking a job for job and not, I think you could get overwhelmed, like you say, with the magnitude of it. Um, but I think if you, it also, it also is directly impacted by the environment in which you work. So if those around you are also, um, you know, of almost a, a calm mind or sound mind. I mean, you know, that's obviously, I love working with yourself and Alu in that regard, you know, we bounce all, off each other and, and that sort of thing. So I think that that helps as well if you've got colleagues, um, you know, in the in the trenches uh, with you as well. But I think, um, yeah, ultimately the responsibility does does lie with um, in your role that you do and the accountability there. But I think, again, if you really just put aside the fact that, yes, this is obviously on a national global scale, but just take it, you know, job for job. Um, and I think, once you almost get used to it as well, like, look, don't get me wrong, you know, that first time, even uh, what might be a simple thing to people, but that first time you got to put that team sheet out at a task um, and host your first press conference, you know, it is all eyes on you and um yeah and obviously you have to ensure that it is watertight and no errors creep through and that sort of thing but i think ultimately we are human at the end of the day as well so i think we you know obviously need to be more forgiving to ourselves but um yeah i think it really is um once you also get used to doing it um you know that you, you'll get used to the pressure um and 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 the stress of of the role that it does that it does entail awesome stuff thank you so much lucy uh, please hang around we'll have you come back for the panel discussion um, we'll talk about more of the, the educational um, tips and just other tips of guidance that you guys will, will have. So hang around. Thank you so much. Uh, Brasivu, uh, please can I ask you just to- No worries. Awesome stuff. Brasivu, please ask you just to put your camera on and we'll go to you. Thank you so much. It is on. <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, loud and clear. Sorry, my laptop is giving me problems. So I no need worries. to go back onto the- Cell phone. No worries, no worries. Modern age, modern age. Um, Brasivu, as we was, as we was um, speaking about earlier, um, we we're talking about just the the the, the smooth uh, the smoothest execution that you 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 try to ensure when you are organizing so many things and so many tournaments. Um, back to back, particularly I know, for instance, this year you've got the Australia tour for the men coming here, and then also then the women. Not even a month later, um, the men, the, the women, sorry, arrive uh, New Zealand as well um, in, in South Africa. So it's busy. How do you, you know, manage all of this? And how do you ensure that, you know, you take care of everything that you need to take care of in time and in due course? Well, Lita, so, uh, a lot of the stuff is, is more, I'd say, probably having to think outside the box and more um, analytical. Um, it's all about relationships as well, uh, dealing with the different member boards when they come through to South Africa. So um, in as much as there's an FTP that is out there that everybody is aware of when we are supposed to be touring, but it goes down to the nitty gritties of actually um, put, finding out which, uh, um, uh, how many matches are they going to take place? Because it's the bare minimum that the ICC says this is what you need to play for during the tournament. So, as CSA, sometimes we actually go ahead and find that we need to add a bit more matches um, depending on the, 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 the season that we're in. Um, if you look at the, the Australia the series that is coming up, it's all white ball cricket. And that is mainly because we're going into a World Cup uh, season. Um, so that's why we're playing five uh, uh, ODIs and uh, T -T, uh, three T20s. And at the same time, when we plan uh, for the season, um, like I said, it all depends on what is happening uh, in, in the world out there. Um, for instance, with the World Cup happening in October and November, our season has to obviously start off with white ball cricket, mm -hmm. so that when the players are in the, in the World Cup, they, I mean, just before they leave for the World Cup, they are playing white ball cricket. Then they go through to, to to the World Cup. You never you never know that there might be injuries that do take place uh, during uh, um, uh, the the tournament, and somebody has to come up from from uh, the, the 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 domestic setup. So you don't want our domestic players to be playing red ball cricket. They need to be playing in the same format. So those are things that we need to take play, take into consideration when it comes to organizing tours, organizing matches, uh, to, to ensure that um, everybody is in is in sync. To, 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 to make sure that we bring back that cup. 
Hundred um, percent, and and let you play your part, which is key, and we appreciate that. Um, just now, just lastly, on your side, Brasivo, I know uh, you know it's a, it's a stressful job as well. You know, you, as you said, you need to be creative, think out of the box. Um, what are some of the key challenges you you've come across in your role, and how do you overcome those? And uh, what what are some of the lessons that you've learned over your your long career um, to help you overcome these challenges as they come along? Well, I'd, I'd have to say, Lita, that. Um, one of the key challenges that we do have is is obviously facilities, and I mean, um, you, you all know that uh, um, uh, the, the pitches are a lively uh, uh, element in, in, in our in our uh, cricket, and therefore we need to give curators time to prepare pitches. Uh, we need to uh, also at the same time think about uh, um, scheduling matches that are that will flow um, mm. around the country. Um, challenges that we also find in, in the operation space is that we, we always have to be considerate of other uh, events that are taking place uh, around the country. Um, for instance, uh, if, uh, you'd have the, the Johannesburg cycle race taking place. Uh, uh, I'm not even sure what it's called now, but it used to be called the 94.7. Um, that becomes a, a challenge for us in terms of scheduling matches at the Wanderers. Um, you also have to think of uh, unions that are trying to generate revenue um, uh, in, in by utilizing their stadiums for other uh, entities instead, instead of cricket. So we also have to take that into consideration to allow those unions to make sure that they, they can generate the revenue, then we need to schedule matches uh, away. So it's always um, having to engage yeah. Deal with uh, the, the the CEOs of the different uh, of the different members, mm -hmm. and and make sure that everybody is happy in the end. No, hundred percent. Thank you so much, Brasivu. Um, I'm glad we had we were able to get you back and just to finish the interview. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And moving right along, I would like to please ask Mr. Musa Kubevu, um, the CSA HR manager. This individual was actually there in my first ever interview uh, at CSA. So uh, it was very special to, to full circle uh, moment for me to be able to chat to him today. Uh, Bramusa, can I please ask you just to um, open up your screen, please, and also your volume? Yeah. Can you hear me, Balita? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. But, uh, uh, um, unfortunately, I'm working from home, so I haven't parted the entire day. <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I mean, I'm, no, I'm in the uh, office. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank Do you. I have to leave my camera on. Yes, yes. Uh, please leave it on. You um, see, I lied to the CEO. I said I wasn't dead at the office now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, it's okay. <laughs> but you, you probably had to be there, I'm sure, some important stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to come in, yeah. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Pramusa, um, as I said, um, you were there when I started at CSA and you were there at many people's first interviews and, and first days <laughs> at CSA um, through as you've been involved at, at Cricket South Africa. Can I please just ask you just to, to introduce yourself, uh, give us a bit of background so those who don't know you, uh, what you are and what is your role at CSA? Yo, where do I start? <laughs> From the start, put <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm the I'm the furniture here. I've been here for yeah. I, I want to discuss yes because yeah, <laughs> it's been long. But basically, my journey at CSA, I started I started in finance, and I've been I was there for quite a number of years. So then from finance, then I move into basically uh, my, my, my background, it's finance. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, as a, and that's why I, when there was an opportunity at CSA, but I know CSA way before I came to CSA. So I used to work for a, for a, for a, a, a bookkeeping company and then we we're also doing pastel. Uh, as, as software, so we're selling pastel. Uh, and then we're the first people that introduced CSA. At the time, it was United Cricket Board. So they used to do work on Excel. So we've upgraded them to, to, to a, a accounting software. 
So that's how I knew about say, say, so, so uh, United Cricket Board. But at the time there was United Cricket Board, which was looking after the development aspect of the game. And then there was a uh, Cricket South Africa. I think it was a PTY, a PTY at the time, which was looking after the professional side of the, of the business. So it was two companies. Uh, and then in 2009, that's when they match. The, the 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 two companies. One of the highlights of that major because I think C CSA is the organization that helped the other sporting courts because with the with uh, in terms of tax with with SARS they used to 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 tax us on the on the professional side because that was the your professional business where you had all your sponsors where you were making profits but then on the on the amateur side which was United Cricket Board, you were making losses, but, and then obviously uh, uh, CSA used to subsidize a, a United Cricket Board, but you were not able to offset to offset the the losses on the on 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 the other side. So obviously CSA had to engage engage with with Treasury at the time for us to get uh, the, the 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 Section 11E. You see, now I'm talking like a finance person, but I'd get to... to, 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 to I'm waiting to talk about yourself a bit. We, yeah. So, so yeah. So from there, then with me working in the, in the, in the, in the finance space, obviously the, the, the person that was doing our payroll at the time resigned and then I was moved into, into the payroll space. Uh, Obviously, I, was, I used to work closely with the with your with your uh, HR manager at the time. So then, when the HR manager left, then I moved into the HR space because now I had all the know-how in terms of of HR with me working closely with the the HR uh, the HR manager. Mm -hmm. So in terms of where I come from, I'm I'm from the province with the Sini. Uh, was Zulu Natal, so that's that's the uh, yeah. I'm from there. I I did my my primary school uh, uh, high school there, and then I moved to to to, to Johek for for tertiary for my uh, tertiary uh, studies, and then yeah, and then from there, then I I, I think I work for for a few companies before I came to CSA in 2005. So I've been here since 2005. <laughs> I got you to give so, away the sorry. year. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I no, was the, avoiding yeah. that. Yeah, so I've been here since no, 2005. Okay, no, thank you so much. Um, yeah. For those who don't know, and, and for me as well, when I walked into to Cricket South Africa, I had little knowledge of how HR and cricket can be interlinked. But at the end of the day, Cricket South Africa is an organization. It's a company. And you, obviously that comes with all the regulations around HR. Can you just explain how HR and cricket um, interlink in this specifically um, when you deal with employees and also players who are employees as well? Okay, maybe just to give, uh, let's say, say we have two set of employees. I know I'll say we, we've got two. We've got the administration side, which is us. Within the administration side, you'll have your core, uh, like HR, we are a support function. And then you've got your core, which is your cricket, your cricket guys. So maybe in terms of the career path for those that will be interested in, 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 in cricket, to work for CSA is just to consider that on the administration side, you don't necessarily need to, to know the game that well. When I came in, I didn't know anything. But obviously, in the interview, I had to go in and, and research and try. It was after the World Cup 2003, so I had to try and impress them to say I know a little bit about cricket. <laughs> so, but on your on your on your core uh, uh, business, which is uh, uh, cricket, obviously you need to know. You have to have a deeper knowledge of the game because you can't support that. Uh, you you can't work in that space if you don't have the. The, the 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 knowledge of the game, and then so you've got your administration side, and then you've got your on field. I normally say the off field and on field. The on field it will be more on your players and your and your and your management, and then off field it will be more of your administration side. Yeah. So those are the two set of employees that we have. Obviously, as HR, our our core function obviously is to is to say, I mean. We look after our most important uh, asset, which is employees, both on field and off field. So, so obviously, we need to 
to to to we look at the at the life cycle of the employee yeah. uh, which is from 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 your recruit, uh, from recruiting the employee onboarding mm-hmm. uh, to 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 admin, administering the the benefits uh, and 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 looking after their training and development basically we look at the entire at the full cycle of the employee so and then obviously we are the we are the link between employees and the, and the, and the, and management mm-hmm. which can be challenging because obviously employees sometimes feel that you are on the side of management and management will feel that you are on the side of of employees or of employees so uh, so we are a, a bridge a bridge between the two so so then obviously we also work closely with the players because players they are basically also employees of CSA so what we do on the on the on the side of your admin we also need to do uh, on the side of the of the of the players and also we we also look after the the payroll mm-hmm. so our our hr is not just a standalone so it's it's the combination of of human resource plus payroll awesome so um, that's uh, uh, yeah no uh, you mentioned you mentioned earlier as well the, the importance of the employees and um, that's your your most important um, core function is to take care of the employees and i know um, cricket south africa from the executives from the board as an organization as a whole are very serious to ensuring employee wellness and ensuring that um, you know the, a certain culture exists within the companies you know to be able to succeed um can you just give us a bit of insight into what role hr plays in that um, i know you know you you head up organizing you know events and workshops for for employees so what role do you do you do you really play in ensuring uh, employee wellness and development as well yeah so maybe i, I would say that the uh, obvious as hr we 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 are the custodian of 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 the policies of the company mm-hmm. so and also within that we need to come up with strategies in terms of how do we look after our employees mm-hmm. uh, as, as you you speaking about the 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 when we talk about the well-being of the employee, we, in the system we do have the wellness programs that we that 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 uh, we are the custodian of mm. to make sure that we look our, uh, of uh, of our employees. I think most companies at the moment employees are suffering. I think the mental health is is becoming an issue in the, not only at at CSA. I think in the in the world in general because. The work that we are doing as as employees sometimes it can get very stressful. So then, as HR, we need to come up with ways on how how can we assist our employees because to get the best out, out of your employees, you need to look after them. So it's not only on the money aspect; their well being is very important. That's why we 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 will we look at partners that run, for example, that run wellness programs. Uh, and then we partner with those people that specialize in that for us to be uh, to to ensure that we we have a program in place that will look after after our employees and um, in terms of culture we also the uh, culture gets determined from the top so obviously we need to make sure that uh, we put measures in place where a, a CSA culture is is is, uh, is defined and then then that needs to be workshop to employees so that when you come to CSA, you know very well what is the culture of CSA. So thank you so much, Pramusa. That's it for the section of the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us and please stay on for, for, for the panel discussion later on. Thanks, Pramusa. Thanks, Pramita. Later. Thank you. And moving on, I would like to please call up Mr. Charles Klacher. I see he is online. Uh, can I please ask you just to open up your video and unmute yourself? And then uh, we'll have a chat about the uh, national safeguarding program that CSA is currently running. Uh, Mr. Charles, you there? Um. We see your background, but not you, sir. Okay, now. You can go. you see me now? Yes, yes. Hi, how are you, girl? How are um, you, Lita? Can you just move your screen a bit down so we can just see a bit better? Down? Yeah, that better? Closer to you, your screen. Just closer to you. Closer screen. to me. There okay, that better. Okay. okay, cool. Thank you so much, Mr. Klacher. Um, Mr. Klacher, um, obviously, we're talking today... Um, 
about the safeguarding program, um, which is, has been <coughs> rolled out by Cricket South Africa, and also your role in it as the, 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 the CSA National Safeguarding Officer. Can you please just firstly just introduce yourself and then also just touch on what the um, National Safeguarding Program is all about? Um, hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Charles Pecher. Um, I'm currently employed in a position as a national coach developer uh, with my responsibility areas of the Southwestern Districts Cricket and uh, uh, Bulan Cricket, that's in that entire geographical region. Um, and I'm also the National Safeguarding Officer at Cricket South Africa. Um, I've been employed at Cricket South Africa since the 1st of October 2022. Um, and I'm a member of the professional uh, body of the Sports Coaches Association, better known as SASCA. And I have a national coach, I'm, I'm a, a national coach developer designation. And I have this. Um, I'm a senior sport. I have a, the senior sports coach designation. And uh, actually, if you're looking at my career, I've been very fortunate to have been exposed to the sport of cricket for many years, and uh, have extensive uh, cricket development experience. We have occupied various leadership roles, uh, mainly at, in, in, the, in the Western Province Cricket Association environment, uh, inclusive of serving on the, the, the um, Western Province Cricket's audit, audit and risk committees, is uh, coupled with extensive uh, sports administration and management and coaching experience. And uh, giving away my age now, as coupled with 36 years of voluntary and community-based sports management, and sports administration experience at a strategic and operational level uh, with additional six years. We are unfortunate the last six years to be within the Cricket South Africa coach accreditation and coach development program environment uh, in the capacity of the provincial coaching manager at Western Province Cricket and now in the new, new position as uh, a national coach developer. Um, in addition, uh, the job that I've got, you also need to have a full understanding and a practical experience implementing the relevant um, South African sports governance legislation, events legislation, and processes uh, and occupational health and safety legislation, global and uh, national safeguarding and transformation policies and sporting trends. Um, also, and this, I'm actually say I'm very fortunate, I'm actually um, getting paid to do my hobby, my passion, which, which is cricket and sports development. Uh, in addition to what I've just explained to you, the administrative development experience, I have extensive, which, my, which was my, my previous profession, um, extensive experience as, a, as, as an audit um, practitioner uh, with experience in inter internal auditing, forensic auditing, information technology audit, risk management, corporate governance, and compliance supported with uh, four years internal audit management experience within the retail environment and 27 years uh, 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 managerial experience in the public sector, of which 12 years was internal auditing at a senior management level, and five years of IT audit and 10 years experience in the financial management and administrative practices. So that's my think, background that I have. <laughs> as much as I think it's safe to say you are one experienced individual. <laughs> Now, I just wanted to take you into the National Safeguarding um, Program and just tell us a bit about that and how, you know, young individuals can get involved in that program early on. Okay, the thing is, it's, it's, it's a massive, it's a massive thing. So I'm going to give, I'm going to go through, just explain to you what it, it is. So if you give me about two, three minutes to actually answer this, because it's important to understand that the framework, because this, this, this sets the setting of what safeguarding is. And basically, um, uh, in terms of the international and national legislation, and Cricket South Africa being affiliated uh, member with SASCOC and the, uh, the, uh, the ICC, and every national sports um, federation requires a safeguarding officer to ensure quick response to any safeguarding concerns that, that might come up. Um, having a safeguarding officer means taking appropriate measures to protect children, young adults, any lead adult, uh, uh, adult before it's too late. And therefore, so the, as a safeguard, national safeguarding officer, I play a, a, cru a crucial role in the promoting of a, sa of a safe environment within our, uh, our, our sport is, is played in. Uh, being a safeguarding officer, you get the opportunity to be part of a, which to me is a gratifying job as the role provides ample scope 
uh, to get more involved in helping and supporting the children, vulnerable adults and elite adults, along promoting and protecting positive health and well-being. Um, as the safeguarding officer uh, also sometimes referred to as a DSO or the, in, in international terms, the designated lead, the DSL, is the person who primarily responsible for managing and reporting concerns about children within the organization, along with promoting children's well-being and protecting them from harm and abuse. The safeguarding officer uh, delivers training and updates policies regarding um, safeguarding. Um, Cricket South Africa, because uh, it's a, a big job, we are a massive organization, as you've alluded to in your introduction. Um, Cricket South Africa established a safeguarding team. It's with me at the, I'm, I'm at the, the national level, and at each provincial affiliate member um, a level there is a designated safeguarding officer, which is appointed to oversee the safeguarding process. And we have the four, four, the four designated safeguarding officers there, looking off the professional cricket level, the club cricket level, the school cricket level and the mini cricket level, and also inclusive of the, the, the private uh, cricket academy levels. And then under these designated safeguarding officers, uh, there is an appointed designated safeguarding officer appointed at each affiliated school, each club, each private academy to ensure that Cricket South Africa's safeguarding policy uh, is implemented effectively. Um, to actually, well, this is not going anywhere. If you look at the role, I'm going to try and it's, uh, give it to you guys at just at a high level. That the the, uh, the, uh, the job entails uh, Cricket South Africa policy and related protocols, which come to make sure that it complies with uh, the IOC, which is your International Olympic Committee, the ICC and SESCOC, also international best practice, um, South African legislation, and related government regulation and national sport policy guidelines. So the policy needs to incorporate all of that. And also need to put in uh, processes to effectively uh, monitor the implementation uh, to make sure that, 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 that all the um, participants uh, within the Cricket South Africa structures that are working with children, vulnerable adults, and adults with high performance cricketers are suitably qualified and licensed in terms of the applicable legislation and the CSA's national safeguarding policy to mitigate any associated risks. Um, and all the participants in the sport of, of cricket need to understand um, uh, 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 cricket safeguarding. And, and, and basically, CSA has got a, a zero tolerance. Thing. We put out a, a media, media release on that to say we support it from the board of directors, our senior management, and everybody's driving this policy to make our a sport um, abuse free one and, and one of the things what you need to understand is that sport is a microcosm of of our society and one look what's happening within our society it comes to gender-based violence which csa also has a, a campaign and a pledge against to end gender-based violence what happens in the community comes over into the sporting environment so not to say that our sport is is, is completely free of it we're trying to create the environment so we, that we, by having awareness projects, safeguarding training, we have a code of ethics and conduct, uh, public awareness, uh, uh, things we can be starting to roll out, education and training programs. Um, and also, um, we need to put in effective, uh, one of my jobs as well is to put in effective reporting process so that uh, uh, vic uh, uh, in, in any victims or any concern or incident uh, without fear of, of victimization and toleration can actually report it. We have an entire reporting process on that, which is basically, if you don't want to report the Cricket South Africa, there are other avenues to report it, so to make sure that it's not swept under the carpet. Also need to put in place a coordinated response to any concerns or incidents. Um, then I need to implement effective measures that minimize the likelihood of incidents. So that's like uh, organizing the safeguard training for participants, our DSO training, actually the appointments that as well, CPD training going forward. And one of the things that uh, we're busy rolling out, also that the board takes uh, responsibility for it. So this, the safeguarding issues that come up also gets maintained or implemented within the Cricket South Africa's risk register. So that the, from the board level, they're also monitoring what's going on. They're also making available education material to, to, to everybody. And then also there's a reasonable that the due diligence steps and processes are taken and implemented at a national level. So that's from cricket coach recruitment policies, 
uh, monitoring guidelines, clearances against the sexual offenses register, the child protection register, and the criminal record is the thing we're rolling out now uh, through a, 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 an entire process with what you're basically rolling on. <clears throat> um, also, uh, I need to establish a reporting procedure that specifies the different reporting channels and designated persons that's been reported to CSA. Also, uh, to responsible to see that is in proper uh, and effective investigation procedures to respond to any allegate, uh, any alleged incidents. And also I need to put in mechanisms to provide the support and information to persons involved in the, in the legislation. And then also to prevent any known offenders uh, 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 that, that, that are working out there that, they don't, that aren't employed within our environment. No, that's in a nutshell, but I, I, on each one that I've mentioned now, we can give an entire day's lecture on if we have to. No, no, um, completely, completely understood. Um, just lastly, how can how can um, individuals around the country um, get involved, particularly bringing in the, the, the safeguarding policies in their own schools, clubs and um, environments as well? How they... um, what, what we, um, the thing is, we, we have, because uh, um, we, we, we've done extensive research um, internationally to make sure that our best practice, we have, uh, we've uh, lies with the, the IOC and with the ICC taking their policies and putting that, put that into our policy. So the procedures is, is actually uh, uh, part of things to make sure, as I said earlier, that what's best practice is actually implemented. So our policy is, is, is continually being um, assessed, aligned and reviewed. So we're up to date with international and any le legislative uh, changes. Um, so what we've done as part of a, this entire project role is a massive project. So we're not just going to implement and doing a tick box exercise. We, we, we're doing it in, in steps and steps or phases. We're currently busy with phase two at the moment where we are rolling it out. So as, as I mentioned, the, the, the safeguarding team that, that's, the, um, that's for your club level and your, and your um, provincial level at schools and that, we are busy in the process with project two. We are we have a go through the process that we have identified at each school and every club that at the point with the DS uh, with the designated safeguarding officer is. We are then rolling this out. Um, the training that was busy in the process, which we it's going to be over twenty six uh, was about th about three and a half thousand designated safeguarding officers. We are busy training up, and it's going to we're going to have to then target. Um, about 20, more than 26,000 coaches uh, in the country, th th those that, and, uh, um, to, to make sure they, go, they are properly vetted and have the, the appropriate safeguarding training. Uh, also now we've introduced modules with our level one and level two, so it's a compulsory module. So anybody doing a course now will go through the entire vetting process and they will do um, uh, the, the safeguarding training. So when they, when they become a qualified, coach, accredited coach, they have all the safeguarding uh, things in a row. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Mr. Charles. You gave us a lot of information there and really appreciate all the preparation you put in. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, moving on, um, I'll just ask, please, uh, for the Chief Marketing Officer at Cricket South Africa, Mr. Wanele Gomez Zulu, to please join us. Um, he'll just be shedding some light on the work that he does in the marketing space. Um, he's a very, very busy man, uh, very busy at the moment, actually, with um, upcoming CSA awards. And he's made special time for us as well. So thank you for that. Um, Mr. Wanele, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, can I please just ask you just to give us a quick um, soundbite of who you are and what you do at Cricket South Africa? Yo, thank you for having me. Yo, I thought you this opportunity to one coming and hanging on for the last three hours. But thanks again. It's an honor, privilege to really speak to you. I see there's a diverse group of audience that's connected here today. So I'll definitely be multilingual. I am a South African, so I try and speak in multiple languages. So I'm and what is what do you say in Africans? We're not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, born bred in Alex, uh, started the game back when the biscuit was introduced to many of us. So that the hook into cricket, and ever since we haven't left, 
that passion and the interest and it's really started in that era and that uh, some of us did try to be on field and then you realize that uh, actually i'm not an on-field person so i'm happy to be part of the off-field activities and that i haven't looked back ever since yeah from a journey perspective it has been a very uh, roundabout in terms of getting to where i am at the moment uh, being part of the broadcast team with the sabc uh, so I spent a lot of time with the agencies as well, both the creative side as well as the media. Did my own thing from an events, music, entertainment. So really, just a combination of multifaceted skills in terms of research and also the marketing fidelity. Awesome. Um, and, and as you know, marketing is a, a very important um, leg of, of, of Cricket South Africa, an organization that is that looks to, to raise awareness about the game and also get the message out there and also making sure that, you know, matches take place and um, fans also attend matches. So you've got, you know, multiple campaigns um, that would be ongoing on, on every season or, 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 or year. Um, how do you identify and target specific audiences and maximize those those campaigns particularly? Because, you know, you you talk, you're now you're wearing a, a ICC Women's T20 um, jacket there and you worked on the World Cup as well. So how was, how did that all come about and how do you ensure that, you know, your, your audience really um, carry or, or get your message and, and carry Carry it the way you want it. Sure. No, thanks. And great question. It's really in a day's work. And this is what I'm trying to figure out. What is it that I do? I've almost um, actually drawn a quadrant, which uh, probably the entire CSA staff knows as quadrant now. It's really four blocks that I try and operate in. One is the brand management and equity side to say, how do we manage the CSA brand and build the portfolio and the audience and the different stakeholders and who we're engaging with. Mm -hmm. There's a science on its own. And then the second is uh, using the data, the insights of who we're engaging, who's the target audience and which one is relevant to what specific campaign and uh, products and the different brands and the different messages that we really focus on. There is a dedicated stream and a section that really provides us insights with that opportunity, those aspects of our business. And then the third quadrant is the biggest of them all. It's not that any of them is less important, but it's hosting world-class and memorable events. Uh, so that's also part of the portfolio that we look after. Uh, working closely with the CVU and all the guys that you've spoken to to say, how do we bring this product together and ensuring that we do enhance the quality of our game and entertain with aspects. And not only on the game aspect as well, it's just how do we contribute to that giving back? You know, it's really those different aspects that we look into as well when it comes to hosting those memorable events and that. And then last but not least is the collaboration aspect, which uh, really speaks to uh, it's not just the people internally that we engage with, but externally as well. There's a multifaceted of partners that we work with, sponsors, government, and communities. All of those we then bring into the aspect to say, how do we work collaboratively in ensuring that we achieve common objectives? You are muted. Thank you. Uh, just to just break down a bit of, of your, your department, as you said, it's, it's quite multifaceted and you, you know, you have to put on different hats at different times within one department. So can you just take us through the, the, the part, the careers that exist in your department, you know, um, and also just the roles, particularly this season that you look to have in your department to ensure that you, you meet your targets and you, you, you're the picture at the end comes out the way you want it. Uh, three, four quadrants. It's you can pick of you know different pathways and opportunities that are available. Mm -hmm. The easiest one is obviously from an events management side. So working closely with the events team, very highly skilled, and and not just really about you know putting up structures and logistics, but there is a legis uh, legislation that we're bound by, so we have to follow that, ensuring that. We do it here and then working closely with all the different uh, host unions, venues, and ensuring that we do adhere to those legislation and that. But so from an event perspective, there's a host of opportunities that are available there and really just ensuring that we stay to our class events and that. And then comes the, 
the insights parts. The insight is really around using our digital ecosystems, which is all our assets that we have, you know, as a uh, as CSA and taking all of that and saying, what, what can we learn in terms of the insights and the data and the analytics that come through that? It is a different skill set there in terms of finding uh, obviously digital specialists, working with some of the IT gigs. There's a, there's a whole gigs department with our CRM partners. It's almost a complex IT. It's almost going into that IT world, AI world, and really it's that understanding our innovation space. And then the other one, which is the brand equity and management. So this is where we look for marketing, uh, marketing managers. We look for digital uh, brand managers, media planners, and really just you know, coordinating all the different levels of campaigns that we're managing. No, 100%. Thank you so much. Um, I'll actually give you an opportunity now. I know you are a very busy, busy man. Um, to just shed some light into some of the plans that you have for, for the country and the nation this season. Um, not, touch, not going into too much detail, but just give us a highlight of what you're looking forward to this season and something that you're really excited about. Next week, such a Friday, 11 o'clock. It's our CSA Awards. So come 11 o'clock at night, that's what, that's what I'm looking forward to, where I can switch off and say, whoa, it's been a very memorable project. So that's one that we're working out frantically with the entire team. So certainly looking forward to that. And if you could switch on the 7th of July, Super Sports 212, uh, really something spectacular that we're planning across the CSA fraternity on that. And then post that, we've got the, uh, the um, KFC mini seminar, obviously working closely with the KFC mini team, uh, the national seminar as well, really saying, you know, that development program, how do we tell those stories? How do we enhance and saying, here's opportunities that are available nationally from that program. And that's where some of us, as I said earlier, started with that game in that thing. So helping a lot in that front. And then you've got the Australia talk coming up. So something that also the big banner. And after that, it's the women's New Zealand tour. That's also coming. Uh, that we're planning uh, the World Cup. We've got the fixtures now that we released not so long ago, yesterday, not two days ago. So what does the send-off look like? What does the squad look like? What are those, those plans? And what is the kit? So something to look forward to. We are creating a new kit for the team. So those are exciting projects that we're working on. And then post that, it's all the upcoming tours as well. Which, and then the focus is mainly on the women's team as well to say, how do we enhance you know, and sustain what we started earlier on this year? Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. As I said, very, very busy man. Um, and that's where the passion comes in. Um, it's very important for you to, to keep going. So thank you so much. And please do keep going. We appreciate all the work. Thank you so much. Please stay well, in you. line for a panel discussion soon. Thank you so much, Bawanele. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Um, last but definitely not least on our um, individual interview section, we've got the senior cricket manager at Cricket South Africa, Mr. Johan Veyes, um, who heads up a multitude of, of, of programs um, at senior cricket level um, across men and women. Uh, Mr. Johan Veyes, may I please ask you just to switch on your screen and your mic, please? Mr. Veyes, can you hear me? I can hear you, Lita. Good evening and thanks for having me. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, Mr. Vase, um, as I said, you also one of the individuals that handle an array of, of programs and um, work with different people and different stakeholders within Cricket South Africa. Can you just firstly introduce yourself um, and also just touch on overlay what your, 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 your role is at Cricket South Africa and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis? No, thanks, Lita. I'm not going to take up um, time as the two previous speakers in Charles and Juanele. <laughs> yeah, now, um, yes, I'm currently the, the senior cricket manager at CSA, uh, working in the cricket services uh, business business unit. So obviously, um, I'm responsible to drive efficient um, and effective uh, senior cricket programs within the CSA, 
a pathway in conjunction with our CSA members, as well as the presidential plan positions. And that obviously entailed the following, uh, looking at a professional cricket from a cricket services business unit and looking at a sustainable domestic league structure that is compet competitive first of, and for all, obviously to provide player uh, increased opportunities and develop future talent uh, for the national teams. Uh, when it comes to the women's cricket uh, side, uh, we're looking to constantly improve the strength versus strength uh, competitions to ensure that national players are playing in the base domestic competitions available. Uh, I'm also responsible to manage the, the 15 provincial academies, and that obviously include the Fort Hare Academy program down in Alice at the University of Fort Hare. Uh, to make sure that players um, are prepared for the next level, uh, obviously showcase their talents uh, within the domestic structures. Uh, also looking at uh, the managing of club cricket uh, structures at member level, uh, and then also run the senior rural cricket competitions on behalf of CSA as the rural executive formatory as part of uh, an associate, associate member of Cricket South Africa. Then we, uh, in the senior cricket department, uh, we are also responsible to, to, to look after our ancillary members with regards to disability cricket, our blind cricket, our deaf cricket, and our uh, intellectually impaired cricketers across the country. Uh, we're looking at uh, indoor cricket, obviously that includes action cricket, just from a manager, management per, uh, perspective and ensure that they are compliant. Uh, then we're looking at the, the SA Forces cricket, uh, which obviously includes uh, the SA NDF, um, the South African Police Services, as well as the Department of Correctional Services. And then uh, as part of the ancillary members of Cricket South Africa, uh, looking at the veterans cricket, obviously over 50s and now over 40s, and maybe there will be opportunity for you to be part of the over 60s in, in due course. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, looking at a uh, sporting chance from a street cricket and beach cricket perspective. So ancillary members are obviously um, cricket entities who promote the development of the game. And we as CSA acknowledge them uh, as part of our uh, members. No. The Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much, Ms. Reyes. Now, you, you're mentioning so many uh, programs, and I'm sure it takes an individual with a certain amount of, of, of skill and, and, and knowledge of the game to be able to, to handle. Um, so I just wanted to find out, what was your pathway to get to where you are now? Where did it all start for you? Um, I know you're an individual from also <laughs> So where did it all start from you? And how did, you know, you make your way to become, you know, looking after all, all these programs at a national level? Yeah, it all started uh, back, uh, let me start at primary schools, um, where I obviously started to play the game, uh, moved on from there to play high school cricket. And maybe some in, um, an interesting, interesting fact is that I never played representative cricket at school level. And obviously my back breakthrough came uh, at varsity at the University of the Western Cape, where I was coached by Sukri Konrad, Omar Henry, uh, Dr. Andre Odendal, and that actually uh, enhanced my, 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 my cricketing, on-field cricketing skills and uh, lead actually into the fact that I took up a, leader, a leadership position in, in captaining the, the, the first 11 of UWC, uh, taking them to various uh, varsity weeks uh, back in the day. And from that, I qualified as an as a teacher, uh, went back to the most beautiful part of, of the country, the Garden Road and the ostrich capital of the world, um, and then started to play provincial cricket and also captain the provincial team, uh, played cricket overseas um, for a period. And obviously, I think in 2004, uh, when SWD was um, awarded associate status by CSA, uh, it's actually where the, the administration part came into play, where we started an office with three staff members back in the day uh, and trying to build up the, the province into uh, where it got I think in 2013, uh, affiliate status from associate status into affiliate status. 
And then in 2017, um, I got offered the opportunity to apply for position at CSA, uh, got the position, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> 100%. Um, a lot of people say, you know, about your background can help you, you know, uh, help you along your way um, to get to where you would like to be. Um, how do you feel your pathway has helped you since, you know, those days as, as a non-provincial um, cricketer at a young age to then playing provincial cricket to then, you know, um, entering into the administration side? How did that help you to where you now handling so many programs and dealing with players also from various levels? Yeah, I think obviously the, the the setbacks back in the day because when you're a youngster, you believe you you you're the best next uh, on the planet, and uh, went went through the, those setbacks and never got into into provincial or representative cricket. I promised myself that um, one day I will make sure when I'm in a position to make sure that no kid will be uh, left behind, um, and making sure that we provide equal opportunities for all who want to play the game, uh, and that actually set my my administration to 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 uh, to a bit, and I think being in in education for a couple of years, uh, for ten years, it actually provides me with, with the with foundation to make sure that uh, whenever we present, we do it with clear intentions, uh, and to make sure that uh, we give all who want to play that that equal opportunity they so rightly deserve. Uh, in the fact, looking at the past where we're coming from. Uh, it was obviously a, an uphill battle all the time to make sure that we level the playing fields for for, for all the youngsters uh, who will be our next our next provincial players and our next, next pro tier players, um, and that helped a lot in making sure that uh, I I've been there, I knew what it takes uh, to 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 get to the next level and and making sure that uh, I uh, add value to the system in its entirety. The various. Um, that's it for this section. We'll have you back in just a bit for the panel discussion. Thank you so much, sir. And um, up next, uh, we've actually got two individuals, as I mentioned earlier, on the, these um, success stories, if I can put them that way. Um, they've, they, they, they've achieved their success in a unique way. Um, they've got interesting stories that I think everyone would really, really benefit from hearing. And, you know, not um, taking your background or taking, you know, your, 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 where you were, how you were raised or where you were raised into account, you know, you can really achieve anything you put your mind to. And these individuals, I think, um, illustrate that perfectly. May I please ask Mr. Wesley Kuletianos, as well as Ms. Sanem Zimela to please switch on the camera and we'll have you both on just to discuss your stories. Uh, Mr. Wesley, are you there, Sane? Can you hear me? Yes, Lita, how are you? Can you see me? We're all good. Yes, I can see okay, you so much. Uh, let me just wait for Sane. So Sane, can you hear us? So Sane. All right, we'll start with you, uh, Mr. Wesley, um, while no Sane just connects. Um, Wesley, um, interesting, interesting story. Um, not long ago, you were, an inter uh, you were a cricketer in the domestic scene, um, playing at the Easterns, and now you're a chief executive officer. Can you please just firstly introduce yourself quickly and give us a bit of background about yourself and how did that um, turnaround happen? No, definitely a unique situation. But yes, thanks for having me on this webinar. What a, what a great initiative. So I really do appreciate having me on. Um, yeah, my name is Wesley Kalentianos. As of the 1st of June, the CEO of the Easterns Cricket Union. Um, yeah, to take you back, my cricket journey probably started at about four years old when I was playing club cricket. I think I made my, played my first club cricket game as four years old for CBC Old Boys in Boxburg. And sort of my love just grew from there and my passion grew from there. Played club cricket and school cricket all the way to under 13 for Easterns, played in the under 13 Standard Bank Week for Easterns. Um, and then was lucky enough to get a full academic and sporting scholarship to St. John's College in Gauteng, which was obviously a fantastic opportunity and really, really started shaping my future academically and sportingly. Um, and then, yeah, played under 15 cricket for Gauteng and the PG Barca week, it was still then. Played under 17 in the MTN week, played in the Kai Majola Coke week, all these great initiatives from CSA, managed to play through that whole system. Captain quite a few of those sides as well, I think. Captaincy was sort of at the forefront of most of the teams I played in, which was always very nice, and I was blessed to have that. 
then yeah, very blessed straight out of school. Um, made my debut a month after I finished my trick for the Eastern's first class side. And I was very blessed to have a 10-year a career. Would have been a full 10-year career with the Eastern Storm, but I did spend a year um, in the lovely parts of East London playing for the, for the Border Bears, which was a fantastic, fantastic experience as well. But yeah, I was very blessed to have a 10-year career, a very fruitful career, a very enjoyable career with lots of memories. And then a very, very swift transition, um, sort of in four months from player, captain to CEO. I did captain the Eastern Storm and the Border Bears, captain the Eastern Storm for four years, captain the Border Bears for a year. And then, yeah, maybe those leadership qualities, what I forgot to mention as well, is in that 10-year period, uh, I managed to get a degree in civil engineering from the University of Pretoria which I think set me in great states for what had was to come. And then, as you said, CEO about four months later. So it's been a very, very quick rise, but a very enjoyable one and very excited to be a part of it. Yeah. And um, Wesley, what motivated you, you would you say, um, to actually take on this transition? Because obviously it's, it's a massive one. Um, you know, not many people would transition from a playing career for, of, as you say, almost 10 years to then... Um, and then quickly jumping into the hot seat again in a different way in the CEO now off the field having to deal with all the other matters as well that are involved in, in the organization. Um, what, what really motivated you and, and what made you take on that challenge? No, 100%. And I think first of all, I mentioned that I was very lucky through the dual career pathways that CSA offer and Stack offer to be able to do a full four-time uh, professional degree such as engineering while playing professional cricket. And I think that also played a big role in me saying I also need to try to give back to, to this game and give back to the opportunities it's given me and uh, the way to forward my academic career it has. And I think I remember sitting around last year, Easterns have been struggling for a, for a valued CEO for quite a long time. There's been quite a few in and out, quite a lot of turnover. And I remember sitting to myself as a captain and thinking, I'm the captain of this team and I'm making a difference on the field here. Yeah? But surely with everything that CSA has given me, cricket's given me in general, I can put that passion into something else and enhance it in a way. And I said, why can't I do this job? Why not, why not me? As opposed to saying, oh, the career path, do this, do that. I said, why not me? And it sort of just went from there. I said, why not me? I have all these things behind me, all these sort of attributes, so to say. Why not me? Why can't I make a difference? And we always complain sometimes as cricketers from the operating side, we're supposed to be the custodians of cricket, but not really looking after us. So for me, why not put myself in the hot seat and put, put my money where my mouth is and really try and make an impact that way? No, awesome stuff. And, and kudos to you for taking on that challenge. Um, as you are, I think you're not even 30 yet, um, Wesley. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and very young. And obviously, um, coming into this new role, um, you know, from the playing side, yes, you might have experience, as you said, as a captain as well, but it's it's a different, diff it's a different beast on its own. Um, so what would you say? Are some of the things that are helping you in your personality and some of your your as you say your captaincy and just your career as a whole how can how is that helping you overcome certain challenges that i'm sure you've already faced in your four months tenure no i think as you said correctly said leadership's a massive part sort of being throughout my whole career sort of something that maybe came naturally to me so i think sorry being able to do that it just helped me sort of gain the respect of the office as well i think you need to be able to gain the respect of the people you're working with as as a captain in cricket gaining the respect of your players, you need to gain the respect of your operating staff and you need to work together as a team. So that's one big aspect. For me, another big aspect that I'm going to talk a lot about is education yeah. and considered and accelerated learning and learning all the time. I think now as a young CEO, it would be very stupid of me to all of a sudden get to this position and not think I can still learn more and start to educate myself more. I think if we use like a guy like Doc Fall from the Titans, who's obviously done really well as a CEO, he also started as a relatively young CEO but through his period as 20 years as a CEO, he went on to get his master's, his MBA, his doctorate. So that continued learning and that continued growing in the space is very key. And I think for me to overcome challenges that I'm going to face, I need to be open to learning from as many different people, being mentored by other people who have done it. And just in general, upskilling yourself as much as you can. So I think for me, at the forefront of everything we do sort of is just upskilling yourself, getting better education and throughout. And you're never, you're never too old or never too high up to be learning new things. 100%. And just talking about that, you know, um, you've got a lot of responsibilities, I'm sure, um, from various aspects of the business. Uh, how, as a young CEO that you are, how do you navigate to those responsibilities and expectations as well that come with this role that you have now? Um, and how are you looking to, you know, address some of the challenges? Is it a matter of dreaming big and aiming for the sky and landing, you know, somewhere in the middle? Or is it, you know, just really being calculating with in terms of how the expectation that you set for yourself and outside as well? 
No, I think I think a big thing for me and I think for all people that we are good cricket men and we love cricket and cricket men and women, we love cricket, we support cricket a lot. So I think the key thing for me is with all those expectations, all those dreams, those goals that we have at the union, mm-hmm. at the forefront of it is being custodians of the game, making the game accessible to everyone, giving everyone the opportunity to play the game that has blessed me so much. So I think with all the decisions we make, yes, we can talk about the financial stage, trying to get more money in the governance side, the participation side, the success on the field side. But at the heart of all of that needs to be the love of the game, the passion for the game, and trying to be custodians and presenting the game to everyone in this country and making it accessible to everyone. So for me at the moment, obviously very, very new to the role, very young to the role. But with every decision I'm making, I always try to ask myself the question, how is this benefiting the whole city of Ikurileni? How is this helping us all grow the game, enhance the game, and make it a better place for people to play? If you go into specifics, we all know that there's a big challenge in terms of getting corporates involved. I think since the franchise system dissolved, small, so-called smaller unions like the Eastern Storm need to sort of start their own brand and not be under their Titans brand anymore. Have an Eastern's brand yourself. So from a marketing side, from a commercializing side, really getting the Eastern Storm brand out there sort of on the forefront. And I think if you look at all the little nitty gritties, there's lots of different ways we can attack in terms of improvements of our stadium, improvements of our finances, getting our team from Division 2 to Division 1, because that is sort of the, the funnel that we have set up, the promotion relegation. I think that's also all in the forefront. But all those aspects are sort of moving parts in a better way for us to be custodians of the game and to make that game accessible to the public in general. Awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, just lastly for me, uh, obviously you, uh, an individual who's taken a unique pathway um, from playing to becoming a CEO, what advice would you have for young individuals, fellow professionals such as yourself, who might think, oh, I need to be at a certain age to, to really take up that responsibility or I'll need, you know, a lot more um, knowledge and experience before I go there. Um, what advice would you have for them, you know, in terms of, hey, if you if you know enough and you're confident enough or, you know, whatever advice would you have, what advice would you give those individuals who are saying, hey, I'd like to actually do what you're doing and possibly also take on a challenge at a young age? Well, look, first and foremost, if you're not going to believe in yourself, you're not going to back yourself, then no one else is going to. It's as simple as that. I think you've got to also look after yourself in all spheres of your career. If you're a very, edu- very good sportsman and look after your sport, look after your health. But if you want to pursue a career further on after cricket, Look after your education. CSA and SACA have got brilliant initiatives in place to make studying and tertiary education at the forefront of everyone's career. So you'd be silly not to use that. Continue to upskill yourself, continue to grow as yourself as a person, as a sportsman, as a cricketer. And more importantly, just believe in yourself. Be the change. I know it's a cliche, but say be the change you want to see. And the matter of that is a lot of times we're very happy to complain instead of taking the steps to put ourselves out there, take the initiative and really just take the bull by the horns. And I think... If one thing about my appointment is proved is that boards out there and all different unions are willing to look at youngsters, are willing to think outside the box in terms of cricket. I think if you look on Pile Ramela, another great cricketing man has gone in as the board of chief executive. So I think boards are starting to see the value of having good cricket people in the roles. So I think as a young age, starting off, even if you're playing professional cricket at 19, get these backgrounds, get your background in your education, keep upskilling yourself because you never know when A, your career might end, or be when you retire, how you want to transition into off-field stuff. As I said, I think one of your first slides was a lot about passion. And I think playing the game brings a lot of passion out in you. And we need good cricketing people, talented, passionate people involved in our cricket in order for us to be successful. So for me, that is the very key part of it. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wesley. Uh, before you guys want to see uh, Sane, is she on? So Sane, are you on? If you are, please say hello. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm here. Sorry about that. I just needed to run from work because we just had an, uh, an unexpected power cut oh, and no. I had to run from work to rush home. Sorry about that. No, no worries. We appreciate it. Well. <laughs> we appreciate the effort as well. We'll quickly get into it then. Um, Susanne. Obviously, as I said, mentioned earlier, you've taken uh, a unique and pioneering um, route to to where you are now as the Cricket Services Manager at Border Cricket, um, becoming the first actually ever female Cricket Services Manager when appointed uh, two to three years ago. Um, Just introduce yourself, please tell us a bit about yourself and what you do at Border Cricket. Okay, thank you so much, Lita. And... um... Hello to the colleagues out there and uh, thanks for sharing their news as well and how they actually get into their career path as well. Uh, for me, actually, it's 
yeah, this year is actually my fourth year because uh, I joined Border Cricket uh, back in um, in 2019 October as the cricket services manager. And uh, but I started. Uh, I've been 15 years in the administration of cricket because I started back in uh, when I was still in KZN when I actually joined uh, KZN Cricket as an intern. And then uh, uh, got promoted to be um, uh, an assistant manager. And then also after Linda Zondi has left to join CSA as the convener um, of selectors. And then I was promoted to be the development, man development uh, manager, uh, township and rural development manager at KZN Cricket. So I was with KZN Cricket uh, uh, for, I think, uh, about 11 years. Uh, of which in 2017, I won the, the KZN and the SA Administrator of the Year. I was actually managing about 80 employees at KZN, of which actually me actually uh, joining border, I think it was a high time whereby I actually see myself as, as um, wanting to actually be along the cricket uh, pipelines and within the presidential plans positions and take up the challenge of actually looking at the broader space because at the development uh, uh, um, uh, development um, section that I was heading in KZN, it has its own limitations as well, whereby I, I didn't actually uh, didn't uh, uh, interact or manage or administer the elites, but it was only the development side of things. And then when you, uh, I graduated now to actually manage the, the cricket services space, then it allowed me to actually look after uh, the elite players as well, whereby your academy side, your semi-pro with the last domestic structure, and also interact with the recruitment of players and and and, and all that. And we who who are actually uh, involved in the cricket space in a, in a professional level. So yeah, that has been my journey. So it's it's quite a vast journey that I've been. But I've started at a very early age. But I fell in love with the game from the development stages. Uh, sorry, Lita, I don't know whether it's me, but I cannot hear you. No, no, sorry, I was just on mute there. Um, I just want to touch on that on that love that you mentioned there as well. Um, you, it's, as I mentioned earlier in, in the program, passion is very important. Um, what do you say about in terms of what drove you as an individual to to really continue pushing and even as you say make that leap from from the working with development now you're working with elite um, and semi pro and professional players as well. What what motivated you to keep going at that development phase and then even make that leap as well. You know, I will be honest with you, the passion that actually it got very much stronger when I was actually working with the youngsters, seeing how cricket was actually changing lives mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, of cricketers, more especially coming from the uh, previously disadvantaged areas, from the rural areas, mm -hmm. township areas, uh, to making uh, a living, to be able to actually give back to their families and be the sole providers to their families, how the opportunities that cricket can actually give to the youngsters out there. Because in that space, while I was in the development stages there, you will find that the way cricketers that will actually receive bursaries to join your, um, your traditional cricketing schools. And then after that, we look after them and then they uh, get a scholarship. And uh, after that, they actually join the professional side of cricket and they able to earn a living. And the families, they forever like, wow, this is, you so, saw, so for me, actually the, the life changing stories that you, you see on day to day actually instill the lifelong interest in me because I never played the sports. I did actually the sport management in cricket. I was, oh, I was a sport person in general. I was in love with the sport in general, but I never thought I was actually going to be in cricket per se. But seeing, being in the cricket administration now, seeing how 
sport can actually change life. And for cricket, for instance, because I did not actually have much knowledge of cricket when I joined um, the sport, but it doesn't even end there with the players only, even the, the coaches themselves, how the volunteers themselves, the volunteers that will actually do your mini cricket coaching, be involved in your, in your empowering, in the coaching space, and how they've actually succeeded in their life and how it's actually, cricket has actually made so much opportunities for people out there, more especially from the place where I'm coming from in, in KZN, like I said, the number of coaches that I actually was managing there was such a vast number because I was looking after both inland and, and coastal. So uh, there's so many good stories that I can tell and so many good stories that I can share of people whom cricket have just changed their life and they are somewhere and they are able to, um, to be the breadwinners of their household through cricket. No, um, I can I can I testify to that as well. I've, I've I've encountered a few individuals that you've worked with in in those programs in KZN, and I must say they've uh, laid a foundation for a lot of youngsters um, on and off the field through through the pipeline. Uh, Sissy, I just want to. Also, just then touch on the work that you do at Border Cricket. Um, you obviously are in charge of the, the Cricket Services Department. You've also um, acted in various roles as well. Can you just tell us um, how this journey has been at, at Border Cricket and how, you know, what are the challenges and what are some of the things that keep inspiring you every day to keep going on? Okay, uh, actually, one of the biggest challenges obviously will be COVID because uh, actually there was none, no expectation that we're actually going to have uh, two seasons of no cricket happening uh, within our space because I actually came and joined uh, Border Cricket at a very high note and having so much ambition and uh, so many plans and, 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 and innovation, uh, uh, innovating plans that I, I, will, I, will, I was actually looking to, 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 to do, but, and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So now, and then it has taken a step back in terms of where we will want to see cricket. That is actually our biggest challenge because now we're actually trying now to convince the schools more especially and to convince the people out there that sport is still is here and sport is still a place where they can consider to actually uh, fell in love with. And then also to try to revive cricket within our space within our space as you know that cricket plays a uh, long uh, hours and then there are some cricketers that we've lost in within the mist who mm. have actually um a, a, a option to, to actually take some other sporting code as a, as a sport of choice so within those are, are the are the biggest challenges i think all over that I can actually mention in terms of uh, of COVID, but with me now doing the cricket services, just to make sure that we give support into making sure that all the program drivers, like from your mini cricket, your youth, mm. your uh, your club space, the the vandalism that happened within our club spaces in our. Uh, club facilities also we need to make sure that we build partnership with your your municipalities to rebuild those uh, vandalized facilities that were vandalized during COVID times and then also the clubs that were slowly trying to give up to actually get them back to the game and whatsoever because as you know, with the new domestic structure, the, 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 the competition is very tight now. It's do or die. We all want to be in the division one. So we, we really need to make sure that as cricket services, we are the engine to make sure that there is actually feeder that is feeding our profit, our proteas to make sure that there is players coming through within our system. But for that to actually happen, we just need to make sure that our systems in place 
uh, they run smoothly mm -hmm. and uh, they are actually in a way that there is no destruction. Uh, there is actually a, a, each and every pillar or the link that we have from mini cricket space right up to the academy, there is a link with less destruction with the in between. So that by the time players want to actually be uh, ready to be selected for Inyati, Stenke Pinyati, or to go to the other provinces as well, they are actually ready and they've been playing in good facilities that has actually uh, been in, 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 in that is actually supporting their cricket skills. 100%. Thank you so much, Sissy. I'm glad it was, um, I'm glad you were able to join us and it was very worth it. Thank you so much for, for giving us your time. Thank you. Um, just last position or last section of our webinar uh, with just a few minutes over time, um, but I promise this will be worth it. Can I please just ask the 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 panelists again to please switch on their camera and then we'll just have a chat on the tips and guidance that we can provide for our youth. Thank you so much, Sasane. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I see. Thanks, Wanele. I'll actually kick off with you then. Um, Wanele, just in terms of, of, of a marketer, someone who, who has a passion for marketing, a lot of the people replied there um, that, you know, they want to go into marketing and, and really want to, you know, work in the media and marketing space and the commercial space. But specifically for marketing, what are some of the, the qualifications and um, advised um, pathways that one can take if they want to be able to, to work for Cricket South Africa in the marketing department? Uh, I, you know, yes, there's the formal education that we all go through, but the key thing that we look for, and especially the centers around CSA and its fraternity, its family, its passion, uh, the very first thing that we look for is the personality, the passion, and the willingness to learn. You know, uh, I started here not knowing much of cricket, not knowing much from, you know, working with other affiliates, but had the basics. And in there, it's the need to know, it's the need to learn, it's the need to uh, excel and improve wherever we can. And there's always uh, opportunities of improvement in that. Mm. So things that we look for is exactly that, you know, that willingness to really take on the baton, learn and grow within this, but the fraternity of that. Obviously there is the different streams that I did mention in terms of project management, events management. Mm. Those are almost the formal structures, but the informal and stuff that you learn from your family, you know, the values that you're instilled in, these are the things that really build the character and that's what we look for. No worries. Thank you so much. And noted, Mr. Klacher. Um, I just want to go to you, Mr. Veyas. In terms of, obviously, you work with a lot of programs that touch on various um, streams, whether development cricket and also senior cricket as well. Um, in in terms of, of, of helping youngsters now who are aspiring youngsters who want to to be able to one perhaps you know um explore the the on-field career opportunities that exist you know at the development and, and senior level or you know people who want to be able to coach and work in the administration side of things where would they start and how would they perhaps go about you know um realizing this 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 um, dream of this well, thanks, Lita. I think the uh, uh, most important point to start is obviously um, within the in the cricket senior cricket space, uh, we're providing opportunities for identified cricketers uh, within our provincial academy structures um, to get involved in and being identified at member level, and obviously provide a holistic uh, development for them uh, from an educational perspective as well as uh, as a playing uh, perspective and because we believe uh, there's life after cricket and, and uh, whilst you're in the academy space, you need to make sure that you qualify um, and coaching levels, coaching level one, level uh, coaching level two is, is non-negotiables in that three year period, um, as well as obtaining a, a, a match official certificate uh, because not everyone is gonna coach the Proteas, but uh, we can create opportunities with, within the match official space as well. Um, looking at, at, at the uh, panel umpires and so forth. And then one of our um, primary ob objectives within the academy space is always also to provide um, formal educational training as 
well as vocational training to make sure it because not every single talented identified cricketer in the country uh, will have access to 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 a, a tertiary institution but mm -hmm. to make sure that we provide that vocational training as well uh, to cover all our bases Awesome. Thank you so much. Just want to remind uh, the attendees, uh, if you have any questions for our panelists, please pop them in the chat box and I'll give them a read. Um, just moving on to Mr. Wesley, back to you, sir. Um, in terms of just um, in, as, as, as a CEO who used to play cricket, and as you said, you, you were studying extensively so during your cricketing career as well, um, any tips for youngsters who may be watching or who may watch this later in terms of just balancing, you know, your cricketing um, career and aspirations and your books? Um, it's very important, but I'm sure, it, I mean, you, yeah, you, you require to spend long hours in the net, um, but also you require to spend long hours in front of books as well. So how do you balance out uh, the two? Look, um, I'd be lying to you if, you if I say to you, you're not going to have some sleepless nights. It's, it's going to happen. I think if I remember, um, we were playing a game at Wanderers against Gauteng and I had to write a semester test at six in the morning. Um, one of my professors was very kind enough to let me write at six in the morning so I could finish by eight to try to get to the game. So there will be definitely challenges, but um, uh, some proof now saying it really is worth it sometimes. So I think it does pay off. So I think, look, I'd be lying if I'm saying to you, look, you can do both and it's going to be easy and it's going to be fun. But I think it's very important. And I think as, as the gentleman before me said, any kind of upskilling, any kind of education is just amazing. Whatever you can get yourself onto, whatever excites you, whatever is passionate about you, do that type of thing. I think if you want to go the route of doing an engineering degree or one of those kind of degrees and playing cricket, then so be it. If you want to do something else, so be it. But I think as long as you're upskilling yourself and keeping yourself busy as well. I think as cricketers, if we're honest, I've played a professional career for 10 years, you do have a lot of off time. You do have times in the afternoons where you can do stuff, you can upskill yourself. So if we're honest with ourselves, we need to make better use of those times and really try to upskill ourselves as human beings as well. 100%. Thank you so much, Wesley. Um, Bramusa, can I please bring you in here for my next question, please? Are you there, Bramusa? Ah, yes, thank you. Um, Bramusa, obviously you are purview to 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 a lot of you know initial interviews and and the recruitment process at csa you involved in that heavily um for anyone watching out there who would who is preparing or who would you know one day face an interview within the cricket space what are some of the key characteristics as an hr person and also you know some of the overlying characteristics that uh you know whether it's in marketing or commercial or comms uh, positions that you are working on what are some of the key things that you know when an individual walks in that you'd like to see and all you know any tips for those individuals who will go into an interview one day and what are you kind of looking for what does the hr manager look for in those situations <laughs> uh, uh, I'll just give you a one word answer: attitude. So, organizations they 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 hire for they hire for attitude because a skill can be taught. Mm. So, so we look we we look at someone who will fit into our organization. That's why I'm saying attitude for us it's, it's very key. Yeah. Uh, that's why sometimes it's very key that when you walk in, even through the door, the first person that you you meet at the reception, mm. you 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 they they can uh, they can tell if you you're gonna be a right fit for the organization or not. The way you behave when you walk through the door will determine whether you that organization will take you or not. Hundred percent. Thank you so much. Sir. Appreciate the answer. I'll just finish off then with you, Sisane. Um, just the last question from my side. Um, Sissi, obviously you, in the, as, as the part of the cricket services department, whether it's from development cricket, as you mentioned, um, senior academy cricket, you're involved in all of those aspects. What are some of, you know, now speaking from an individual perhaps who's based in um, in the Eastern Cape or in the border region, who is looking to get involved in cricket in any way, shape or form, whether it is playing or um, getting involved in the administration side as well. What are some of the support systems and um, the and the, the the properties that exist within border cricket specifically and the perhaps that exist also around the country that young individuals players or you know administrators can 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 link up to and and you know just really tap into uh thanks uh, um Lita. um there's so many aspects uh actually 
in the broader space of sports in general, there's so much of uh, volunteering that is expected out there in terms of making sure that you are involved within the game so that you actually uh, can see where exactly you can be able to fixture. Like I said earlier, through mini crickets, we've got very a, a vast number of volunteers that are involved within our mini cricket space. Mm -hmm. And then also when it comes to our, our youth space as well, we've got our, our teachers and educators whom they actually involve in our in our space. Let's say, for instance, during a national weeks in December, mm -hmm. where they manage our 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 teams when they're going to national weeks and so forth, that they can be able to manage the 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 teams. And then there is also scoring as well and empowering space. And we the, we we are actually falling short in terms in terms of women coming through this is still a male dominated sport but you find that when it comes to mini cricket there's quite a vast number of women that are involved but where do they go because mm -hmm. they you you actually ask yourself and wonder who would say why are they actually not uh, continuing with other spheres to be actually involved in the broader space of cricket because you find that in um in in, in the scoring uh, point of view as well we've got quite a number of females that are that are there that are involved in 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 in, in scoring in the match official space but when it comes to empowering i was so happy today when i saw the first female also that is in the national pan, uh, panel which actually showed it can actually uh, inspire women to actually be involved in all these spaces because uh, 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 those are the spaces available for anyone who actually wants to be involved with our beautiful game. Even in the club uh, uh, space uh, as well, our clubs are run by, by males. Like I said, this is a male dominated sport. But uh, us as women, we've got such a, a very, um, uh, we've got an eagle eye, I would say. Uh, we, we're able to, see, to organize things and multitask. So people, they actually, <laughs> I can see you, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> people actually require our expertise because there are some certain elements that our uh, that women out there can be able to actually see and actually able to do very well but with the confidence we are just lacking a, a bit of confidence and we we a, a, a bit of intimidated intimidated by the the uh, by males of which it shouldn't be like that because the males as well they can be they they, they can be afraid they do have fear as well mm -hmm. but uh, but it's just that we need to get that much of a confidence within us to say you know what yes i know this is a male dominated sport but i love this i and and, and I want to be, I love this sport and I want to be involved and I am going to, uh, to, to, to involve myself within the, the platforms that are there and that are available. So even in the coaching space as well, women, you can see, even our women, they did not disappoint. They actually came out in the, in the finals in, in, in Cape Town. So those women that are in the Protea space, the women, they need women within the administration part to actually support them, who understands women's challenges better than maids. So I'm actually sorry that I'm actually being biased into advocating for women to come through and join the party, but we really need more women to come through. No, 100%. And the game is changing in the right direction and because of individuals such as yourself. So please continue Thanks. doing the work Definitely. and leading the way for, for everyone out there. Thank you so much. And I think that brings us to a perfect ending of, of, of this webinar. Please, as uh, Sisane said, it's all about confidence, passion, and really loving what you're doing and take the opportunities that are out there. Thank you so much, Sisane. That brings us to the end, ladies and gentlemen, of the second and final episode of the CSA Career Pathways in Cricket webinar series. And uh, this episode, as much as, as, as like the, the first one, will be available on YouTube, pay, uh, uh, Cricket South Africa's YouTube page, as well as those social media channels as well. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good evening.